Hello, welcome to Volumes with Niramas. Today it's time for a run through of the game Caverna Cave vs Cave. This is a two player game and it's from Uber Rosenberg and Mayfair Games. It's uh, in the same theme as uh, the game Caverna, that was a really popular worker placement game about these dwarves working in their mine and at the same time having a field like in the game Agricola that came before that. But now in Caverna K vs K, it's the same theme, but it works a bit differently. But it's sort of, you can still have our caves here. We're going to build our rooms and so on. But I am going to do something new today. So this video will be in a different angle. I will try to have a camera here overhead and we'll see how that goes. I'm experimenting a bit here. Uh, so I hope you will like it. And please tell me in the comments section uh, if you like that view, if you want me to use the view that I'm you have, have been using up to, until now, it's just this, moving the camera around, or if you like the new one better. So please tell me in the comment section, and I hope you will enjoy the video. So let's go and play some Caverna. It's me against Draco in a heads up game of two playing Caverna K vs K. Alright, so let's get into the game. And so uh, Draco is ready over here, and we are playing Caverna K vs K. Now this is my uh, cave over here. And as you can see, and now right now, uh, we have a bunch of uh, rubble in here, uh, lots of stones laying around, taking up space. The only thing we really have is our cave entrance. So this is where we start doing things. We can activate this spot to get a wood, a stone, a ember. Uh, I'm probably going to say call it wheat because that's sort of what it is. But I, I learned from the rule book that <laughs> ember is some sort of prehistoric wheat. Anyway, and then we have flux. Uh, and as you can see here, we have this little marker here to indicate how much we have of each item. Instead of like in Caverna and Agricola, we have a bunch of stone tokens that we actually have. Here we just move the stone like this. Let's say I have four stone and I have the stone token there. So it saves a lot of components and it works really well. Uh, it was the same in, uh, what's it called, Fields of R. And it worked well there also. So the first thing we need to do uh, we have one slot here, of course, that we can build a room in, but we need to excavate to get rid of these uh, stone rubbles here. What happens then is if I excavate this tile, then I'm going to flip it and it's going to go over there where there's sort of a market here. This is not Draco's tiles, it's just over at his side. Um, and these are what we start out with and then we're going to get more and more um, sort of market tiles that, or rooms that we can then furnish or build into our caves. And it's all randomized in the beginning, so we don't know which, which tiles are going to come out, really. Uh, so uh, that's going to be exciting to see how that works, because every game will be different because of some... I mean, not all of these tiles will probably come out. Now, we don't have any workers, as in meeples, in this game. But the function is pretty much the same, because, like you can see here on this um, uh, row here of tiles, uh, we are going to get more and more actions as we keep going, which is basically the same as in Caverna. Uh, the game is going to last for these rounds. We're going to play, what, what is it, three? Yeah, we're going to play eight rounds in total. And the first three, we're going to have two different dwarves or workers or actions each. And then we get three and then we get four in the final round. The way it works is, is that if I want to do this undergrowth action here, I'll just pull it over like that, and that indicates that I've done it this round, which means Draco can't do it this round. So it works as pretty much the same thing as having workers, and you put the worker on the tile. But this is smoother and easier, especially for a two-player game, it's perfect. So um, right now I have this sort of turn this way. If you were two people sitting uh, oppo opposed to each other at the table, you could of course have it. Uh, in the sort of correct uh, alignment, but so let's get going. Let's get into the game. I'm the first player. It's the first round. The first thing that happens is we're going to switch one of the uh, flip one of these over like this, and we get a new action. So as you can see, they are number two. So yeah, one of these three are going to come up here. We don't know which one is going to come up at first, and so on in every game. So furnishing is this tile. Uh, you get one food, and then you can furnish one room. Uh, it costs one food per dwarf, so this is how you feed your people basically. You don't feed them at the end of the round, but you feed them when you do an action. Right now we have two, two dwarfs, which means I'll have to pay two food to furnish a room. I do get one food when I use that as well, so... 
So, okay, let's go. Uh, I'm the first player. I think the, my first action... Uh, let me see. I think I need to get some food right. So, my first uh, action here of my two is to try to get some food, I think. So, I think I will go for... I will do this one, which is cultivation, so I'll just pull this over to my side, which means I used it this round, Draco can't use it now. Uh, this one here means I get one orange action, which is activating a uh, room on the tile that I have. So I get to activate one of them, and I only have one, so this, I'll activate this one, I'll get uh, either one of these things. I think I will go for, for getting one, uh, we all start at one on everything, but I'll get one more uh, wood, so I'll go up to two there. I'll also get uh, one flux and two ember, so... Uh, like that and so um, that was my whole turn now it's Draco's turn he can choose any of these four tiles and pull it over to his side and use the, the function of it and also you can at any point in the game you can turn one um, uh, wheat I'm gonna call it wheat one wheat one flux or one gold into one food so I think Draco, he will go straight for an excavation here, which means he gets he gets one stone. These are like separated, so he can do, he gets to do this and this, but he has to choose between this and this because that's a slash. So he'll get one stone, which I'll just do like that. He got one stone, then he can either excavate one room for free or pay two food to excavate two rooms. He's going to pay two food, but he only has one food, right? Like that. So he also will pay a flux. So that means he paid sort of two food, because he can convert over there. So now he gets to excavate two rooms, and there's some rules about this. He has, it has to be a uh, orthogonally uh, line ac accessible from the cave entrance. So he can't uh, go up here or whatever. He can't go down here, because that's diagonal. So I think he will just go like this. He will take this one. So that's a uh, warehouse. Um, uh, this tile, I'll explain it a bit. This tile, uh, or this room, this costs two uh, wood to build. It, and this indicates how it can be built. So since there's one black wall there, or dark wall, it has to have a wall like that. The outer walls counts as well. And then the white walls there mean that it could be a wall here or a wall here. That's optional. But he can't have a wall here because there's no wall on the, on the indicator there. And walls is something you can, um, later on, you can get walls and put them down to make these requirements uh, possible. So, um, but this is not his. He, ex he excavated, he got some place here that he can place a room later on. But this goes to the market, so anyone can get it. And if he, uh, anyone gets it, that player gets uh, an action, an orange action, like I did my orange action here on, over at the cave entrance. This orange action is that uh, you can pay two food to get one of each of all these uh, four different um, resources. So that was his first one, now he gets to excavate another one, and I think he'll just go down here. Uh, this is a dungeon, this is a blue tile. Uh, the blue ones, they are sort of passive effects, so you don't activate them, you just have that effect for the whole game. Uh, if When you build it, this one is kind of hard to build, though. It has 11 points as well, there's points on these as well here. Up here. So 11 points, uh, cost 3 stone, 4 uh, gold, and the, this one requires you to have walls all around it. So that's kind of tricky. I mean, you could go like up here, let's say later on, and he could build a wall like that and a wall like that. Then he could, you know, but it, it's kind of tricky. And what it does is, the passive effect is once he builds, or whoever has it, builds a wall, he, you get 2 gold. So it's a passive effect. And there's also a rule about this. Uh, you can't have... You have to have more orange rooms than you have blue rooms. So right now, none of us can build that because that will be one orange and one blue. Has to have more oranges uh, than the blue ones. So okay, that was his turn. He excavated like this, and he uncovered a food marker here, so he'll get one food, just like in Caverna, like that. Well, in Caverna, it's sort of the opposite. You cover it up, and then you get it back. Yeah, anyway. So let's see. He did that. Now it's my turn. 
Uh, I think I want to furnish something, so I'll take this one. First of all, I'll get the food. Uh, that's uh, one thing that happens. The other thing, there's a thin line here, it's probably hard to see. But yeah, there's two different things. So you, I mean, and the rules are, I could just take one food and that's it. I don't have to do the bottom action. I could just do the bottom action and not take the food, which would be stupid. But anyway, I could do it like that. Uh, in some other cases, it might be good. So uh, let's see, I get to furnish. I pay one food per dwarf. Right now, this is a helpful indicator here. We are using two dwarfs, right? We have two actions. So I'll pay two food. And that means I can furnish. And so let's see, what do I want to furnish? I have to pay for the actual tile as well. Um, I think I will go for, I think I will go for this one. Uh, this one has um, the uh, the shelf, as it's called. Uh, this one costs one wood, so I'll pay one wood over here. And uh, this is, uh, it has to have one wall, so I can place it like that. And then I can rotate it just for ease of looking at it. And the benefit of it is that uh, I have a shelf of two on wood, stone, wheat and flax. Which means when I activate this by using those, again, those orange numbers, uh, I will get to refill all of these up to two. So if I have more than two or two, then I don't get anything, but let's say I used it right now, I would get one stone and one wood like that. Because these are already two or higher. So this is sort of like if I use everything, then yeah, you get it. Okay, so that was my action. Now it's Draco's turn. And he does want, he wants to, hmm, he wants to furnish as well. So he'll take housework, which is the other furnished tile here. Uh, these four are always the same that you start with. Uh, they look like that, that on the back there. So uh, the same here, it's always the same tiles you're starting with, which I think could be a problem in the long run because of replayability, but let's not get into that. So, okay, housework for Draco, he'll pay either uh, here he can furnish two rooms actually. The first one would cost him one food per dwarf, which is two right now. Uh, then he could do this one, or he could do it in any order he likes, and so on. But this one would cost him five food or one gold. And a nice, and also this game is kind of mean, I think, because uh, you could take a tile and not do anything. Uh, so sort of, um, you could you could sort of. I mean, it's a two-player game, so let's say Draco can stop me from doing something if you take a tile. You're gonna see that later on. Okay, so he'll pay one gold to furnish. That's one gold, like that. And gold is the, by the way, is the only resource you can get more than nine of. The gold can be flipped to be a plus 10. That means you can have 19 of it. Okay, so Draco, uh, what does he want to get? He will do something sort of... Um, I would like to get this one. The food corner, that means he can have a shelf, as it's called, of three food. So by activating it, he will always get up to three food. But it takes a, um, you have to have two walls, so there's no way he can place it. If he had planned for that earlier, he could have excavated this one instead and have room here. But uh, let's say he didn't think about that. Now, what are his options? Well, you know what, He, I think he will go for this one. The uh, uh, grindstone, it's four points. It costs one stone, so let's pay that. And then with this one, when he activates it, so he can either pay one wheat to get uh, three food or pay four wheat to get seven food. And he'll put it down like this. It has to have a wall there, but then he can rotate it just to make it easier to look at. So that was his turn, and now we both did two actions. So now this round is over. And these are put back in their spots. I think the system is really nice instead of having workers. I mean, it's just, it's just less upkeep, basically. Now, Draco becomes the first player. It just goes back and forth. And we will reveal a new tile. And now we can do two undermining. We can do two actions or activate two buildings in our cave. Or, this is a slash, or we can... Uh, excavate even through walls. We can do one excavation and it could even be through a wall. So that's kind of nice if we say we built the wall and so on. So Draco is the first one to act. Uh, I think he will go for this one straight away because it's it's a good one. Yeah, so let's, he'll take it. The power of being first. So he will do two, uh, activate two buildings here. You can't activate the same one twice, but he has two buildings. So in this cave entrance, I think he will take um, 
I think it would take a wood. Uh, and then in this one he activates it, he pays one wheat to get three food. So one, two, three. So his food is all the way up there. That was his action, now it's my turn. And we still have two actions because we're in the second uh, phase here. I will go for... Um, I need to get some food I guess, but I can always use this, this stuff as food. I need to excavate basically, so I'll, I'll do this one where I get one stone and I'll also be able to, I can get one excavation for free or pay two food I'm going to pay two uh, ember or wheat as food and then I'll get to excavate twice I'm gonna go, I think I will, I will go for a corner, I will go down here and that's the stall, it's six points, it needs one wall could be two more walls if you want to uh, one wood, one gold is the cost, and this one you can turn five wheat or five flux into four gold. So that's kind of nice. It goes up here in the market, of course. And then I'll I have a corner now. I think I'll go for because this room is kind of nice because the store is surrounded by three walls. So I'll go this way. I'll take this one. Here's another blue one. Prospecting site, five points. This one has the passive ability that whenever you use undergrowth, which is this type where you do one action and you get two wood then you also can turn one food into one gold yeah, it's kind of good uh, so then it goes there, that was my action and now it's Draco's turn and he has a bunch of food uh, and so on, I think he will yeah, I think he will do this one then which uh, the furnishing, so he'll get the food first of all then he'll pay two food because he's had two dwarves so that down to three, now he gets to furnish and I think he will go for um, because the thing is uh, Draco does have, so he has a way to generate food here but then he needs a way to generate other goods so I think he will go for the warehouse that costs two wood so that's his two wood there and uh, it has to be against one wall, so you can do it like this and then rotate it just for the looks. Now he can activate it to spend two food to get one of each of the other resources except gold. But that's a good one for him. So it's back to my turn and I think... Uh, I think I will... Should I do this one? I don't know. I, I guess I want to get another tile now that I have some place to put it. So maybe I should. Yeah, I think I would get. I would do the housework. I will pay uh, one gold to furnish a room, and then I will get this um, the one that Draco wanted, the food corner. So that costs me one stone, and it has to be placed like this. I can do that and then rotate it and now when I activate it I'll get up to three food so now I have sort of two shelf buildings this one gives me two of everything except gold this one gives me three foods yeah I guess I'll go for that strategy so that was the whole round we'll put these back like this and uh, say so let's see I'll be the first player and we have a new tile it goes really fast like this really back and forth the masonry here we can build a wall uh, we also get one action and we'll get either a stone or a wood, so that's a good time. And I'm the first to act, maybe I should grab it right away. Uh, let's see, what's out here? Is there anything I could possibly get? Uh, this one is free, so that's not bad, I guess. Um, I could get... I kind of want to get the, uh, what's it called, the tunnel. Uh, gives you food and stone to a maximum of three stone. Yeah, okay. It's cheap to buy. But it has to, then you have to have a wall on each side like that. So, I don't know. Um, let's say I take this one, then I could, I could actually get a wall there. Let's do that. Okay, let's take masonry. So first of all, I get to activate one of each these. I will activate the food corner to give my bring my food up to three. Then I get to 
grab a stone or a wood, I'll get a wood. And then I get to put up one of these walls and I'll put it like this. Now I have a wall there. And now when it comes to uh, furnishing, putting in rooms, you can put them anywhere you have an empty spot. You don't have to uh, connect it with another one like, like you have to do with the excavation. Which makes sense, of course. Uh, so that was my turn, now it's Draco, and I think he will do this one again, undermining. I mean, two actions is really good. Uh, two activations. Uh, so let's see, should he do... Yeah, he will spend, he will activate the warehouse, spend two food. To get one of each. So we'll get one stone, one wood, one of each of these. Then he will activate the grindstone to pay one wheat to get three food. So that's uh, kind of a nice combo there for him. Then it's my turn, and now I plan to get the tunnel, of course, so um, I could either go for furnishing here or furnishing here, but this one's, of course, cheaper because I get the food at the start. I'll get a food, and then I'll pay two food to get to furnish. I'll pay one wood to get the tunnel. I can place it like this because I have a wall there, and I have a wall there. So um, then I will just rotate it just like that. Later on, we can also get rid of the walls and get uh, benefit from it, so... I mean, I might be, maybe I don't need that wall there anymore. Um, but there's also a thing, if the walls run out, there's not that many of them, then uh, there's no walls. <laughs> so, uh, I could try to just sort of get all of them, as many as possible, to, to stop Draco from being able to build. Okay, so then it's time for Draco's second turn, or second action. He will... I think he will uh, just excavate some more, so he'll get one stone. And he'll pay two food to be able to excavate twice. And now he's going to go straight up here, so he'll take this one. That's a sacrificial altar. Uh, costs four stone, and there he can spend one wood, one wheat, one flux, one food to get three gold. That's kind of cool. Uh, then he'll go keep going like up like this to get a corner, which is nice. That's the thre treasury. It's ten points. Uh, it has to be all surrounded by walls. Cost three gold, you can spend three gold here to get four gold out of food. So it's sort of you gain some extra money and food there. Okay, so um, yeah, that was Draco's turn. And so we both done two things, everything goes back. And he'll become the first player and will reveal a new tile. And now we're into the third area, or the, the three area here, which means we get to do three actions each. Uh, so let's see. Um, this one, you can pay 5 wood or 5 stone to get 4 gold, or you can do 3 actions. That's kind of good. I think, uh, let's do it like this, yeah. Uh, I think Drak would use this uh, right away to do 3 actions. So then he can activate all his buildings. So he'll activate this one, where he'll pay 2, let's, yeah, he'll pay 2 food to get 1 stone, 1 of these, and 1 of this. Then he'll activate this one to pay wheat to get three food. And then he can also activate this, the cave entrance. And I think he'll take one of these back again, like that. Okay. And I think I will do this one to get to do two activations. So now I will do, let's see. Um, I will do my shelf, which means all of these go up. One step, so I have two of everything like this because they refill up to two. Then he'll do the tunnel where he'll get uh, two food. He, it's me I'm talking about, I'm confused. I'll get two food and I'll get one stone, yeah, to the maximum of three. So now I, if I, now I can't do this stone thing again because I'm at three here. So there's some restrictions. Okay, that was my turn. Now it's Draco's turn again. Um. It is a bit confusing for me to, to film it like this, because I'm used to like panning the camera over to <laughs> indicate who it is. <laughs> this is a bit harder for me. Okay, so, Draco, what do you want to do? Maybe he wants to get a blue room now. I think he wants to do that. So, let's say he'll do furnishing. He'll get one food, and then he'll spend... Now he has to spend three food, because we're in the three areas, he'll spend three food to furnish and he'll take this one yeah he'll take this one that is free and it's five points so why not it only takes one wall and so you can put it like this and then rotate it 
And now when he does undergrowth, he can turn food into gold. Because gold is sort of, you get one, at the end of the game, when the game ends after this, you get one gold for each, uh, one point for each gold, plus the points you have printed here. So having a lot of gold is, is huge in this game. And also that, I mean, you need gold to do certain things, buy buildings and so on. So you want to get a gold, a way to get gold and sort of, uh, that's what Draco has now. He has a way to generate gold. So that was his turn, now it's back to me. I think I need to excavate some more, so I'll take this one, I'll get one stone, I'll pay two food, which means I can excavate twice. I'll take this room here, uh, the secret chamber. It has to be all surrounded, which I can get down here perhaps. Um, it costs two wood, one stone, and you, when, I act, when you activate it, you either get three flux or one gold. So that's a way to get gold as well. Maybe I'll go for that. My second excavation will be this one, and that's the digging cave here. Uh, I can pay one gold to get to excavate once. That sounds kind of, I don't know. Well, maybe it's good. We can get some combos out, out of that. So it's Draco's turn because now we're doing three actions. So now I think he will do undergrowth. Um, he gets one action, he gets two wood. Let's do that first. So he gets one, one activation here. And uh, I think he'll activate uh, the grindstone, which means he'll pay one wheat to get three food. Then he can spend, because of his prospecting site, the blue building, he can spend one food to get one gold. That was good for him. And uh, now it's my turn, and I want to go for one of these buildings that, I mean, the ones with really high points, they also have the demand of having it all enclosed. So. I'll take this one, which means I can put, I can do this in an order. So I can put a wall like this. So now I have a room that is totally enclosed with walls. Uh, I'll get one wood or stone. Well, I guess I'll take a wood then. And I get one activation. Uh, should I get this one? But now the problem with having all these shelf buildings, <laughs> if I'm already up here, they don't do anything for me. Well, I'll take this one, even though um, it only gives me, because I don't get any stone, because there's a maximum of three here, but I'll get two food, and I'm, I'm going to need some more food, so there we go. Now we've both done three things, so these go back like this. And we are... Switching first player and then we are ready for a new round, but I think I'll take a little break here and we will be back in part two where you can see us play the rest of the game because the game is quite short, so um, we'll do it in two parts and so you'll see how the end game works. This special, this fourth uh, tile here is kind of special because uh, it, it's, it has a limitation, the one, if I have more gold than Draco, then Draco can't use that last space, so that's kind of interesting, it's a uh, renovation there. So uh, be sure to check out the part two. I have no idea. Well, let's see. It has to be there, I guess. That's yeah. There's the eye, I think. <laughs> uh, so you can click the link and go straight to part two, where you will see us uh, finish this game. So thank you so much for watching the part one, and we'll see you soon. Board Games with Niramas is sponsored by Alara Games in Sweden.